Hey Penn. Hey Ali. So we saw Midnight Special on Friday. It's a new film by writer-director Jeff Nichols, starring Michael Shannon, an elderly Kirsten Dunst, Joel Edgerton, some kid, and Kylo Ren. Exactly. Um, and YouTube, we've heard your complaints. We know you hate videos more than two minutes long. So this is a nice short video because it was terrible. What? No, I loved it. Dad. It's okay. Midnight Special is a really nice blend in tone um, between films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., those kind of um, sci-fi mystery films, and then combining that with uh, films like Sicario or No Country for Old Men and the kind of the thriller aspect, which I really quite liked. I think it's Close Encounters of the Third Kind with all the nicest stuff stripped out of it. Which? <laughs> um, it's about two you mean, men. You mean the 70s schmaltz? No, not even that. Just It's about two men with a kid and they go on an adventure. Sounds like Bum Bandits 5. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's, um, and it's... Uh, I'm just going to get straight into this. The main issue I have with it is it's very minimalist, and I think you really like that. I, yeah. The problem <laughs> I have with it, like, the entire course of the movie, is that there's lots of things hinted at, and it doesn't develop any of them. And that's, I think a lot of people are going to say, well, you just didn't understand that you're missing the point, that's the point of the movie. No, they're perfectly understandable, but it's, a lot of it is embracing the mystery. N no, I, the, think. I think the issue is, is that the mystery, there's no mystery to embrace. There's a few sort of ambiguous, oh, where's this come from, where's that come from? Um, what is the point but, of the ending? But would film? adding those answers help the film? I think, well, it's not even, it's not about anything. I will say also Adam Driver was quite, by far, probably the most underdeveloped. He was just basically, um, oh, I'm in, there's the government chasing him, so here's a dude in the government who you will follow so you understand what's happening. And he's basically there to hear all the exposition and then he just kind of, <laughs> Which, yeah, which is a bit of a I ship. I, I, I like Adam Driver quite he a felt lot. Very, he felt like a very similar toned down Kylo Ren. Honestly, the best Adam Driver performance is in Inside Lewin Davis, cut to clip. Um, but <laughs> Sorry, you're done. Um, yeah, I'm, it's a funny scene, all right? Okay. Fuck you. Powder? If you make her a widow, who will play catch out in the back with the kid? please, Mr. Kennedy. SPOILER! Let's start off. The kid is some weird alien. The kid is an alien from another dimension or something. When it got to the end of the film, I was at the point where I thought it was going to keep going for another half an hour or so. Mm. I thought the crux of the movie rested on the fact that it was about his father trying to save his son from being taken away, and the fact that he gets taken away by a bunch of aliens just shouldn't make a difference. But instead, the movie ends there, and it just felt very unresolved. All these hints of sort of the religion, the government, are just not picked up properly. Um, I think the, I didn't feel that emotional about the relationship in the first place. It just felt undeveloped, um, empty, and a little bit vapid. It was very pretty though, and there's some nice music. Okay, um, I I almost entirely disagree <laughs> with almost every point, apart from cinematography and music. Um, I thought, well, I I I like the fact that it was it was relatively straightforward, and what you had instead was. A, a relative, like a relatively simple, uncomplex story. Not to, relatively. To frame. It's a very simple story. Yes, yeah, but just to frame um, a decent kind of thriller with with aspects of family and religion to it. And I, I did. I, I, I like that there weren't so many subplots, and they're trying to shove as much as they can in. And what they were really focusing on was just relationship between um, the characters and their end goal, and them trying to um, understand what the hell is going on with this kid. But and to an extent they never find out, but what's important is that they accept what's being shown to them, and they're accepting that they have to get this kid out to this place. It's not the lack of subplots that annoys me, I don't think. It's more the f So you take Mad Max, that is a very- right. There's no subplots in that film. I was gonna wait until you brought that up. Get yeah. to A, get to B, that is <laughs> that is the movie. And this is essentially get to A, um, and that's yeah. the film. But Mad Max has all sorts of undertones of like, what does it mean to be part of, well, what does it mean to be female? What is it? Are you, are you gonna try and 
add complexity to Mad Max. Mad Max has loads of complexity. <laughs> There's, it's it's a feminist film to start with, like six strong female leads. What does it mean to Midnight have a special as a family movie? No, it's not though, because the, the, I think the dad and the kid are the best the best developed characters. Like Kirsten Dunst <laughs> shows up halfway through the film out of nowhere. A third of the way. Um, fine. She tells very, like, literally all she says is, okay, how are you? Okay. And that's the entire dialogue. You could write, okay, how are you? in various variations and you'd but have the movie. Are you talking about how things weren't explained in the dialogue? Because I thought there's a lot of good there is visual body, story and like, good body language and like, like, especially Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton, they have really, really expressive faces. And I really do like how, as, as opposed to just unloading you with constant dialogue and exposition, what they choose to do instead is um, show the emotional journey and also show through inference, through the very, very little you know about their backgrounds. Wait, no. You can infer quite a lot from just um, using your fucking imagination. Basically, Michael Shannon's arc is that he's He's, he's basically sacrificing himself, what it seems like anyway, um, for the kid, so the kid can go off and he just will serve as a something. distraction. Yeah, and, uh, and that I think is the emotional sort of high point of the movie. Yeah. The fact that his father doesn't get to see him leave. But it's just, it's put to the side, and instead you focus on Kirsten Dunst looking a bit gormless and this kid in the field. I think but if you, you can, can you, I mean, you don't really, how much do you need to tell that, oh, it's the kid's mother, so she's sad. You don't need them, to, what else would you have wanted more focus on the father and the kids' relationship, and there, then there was plenty of focus the, on the, that. The break, I mean, the, the I did enjoy the movie to about halfway through, and I sat there thinking, "What's the payoff going to be? What's the payoff going to be?" And you, it's fine to have unexplained mysteries. It's just the payoff he did give you was terrible. I, um, I disagree. I genuinely thought it was going to continue. I mean, obviously, it, was... it has links to Close Encounters and ET. Obviously, but I think that's a fine enough conclusion because it's, the kid's been like un the kid hasn't seen a sunrise in his entire life. He's been kept shackled in this ranch, 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 the ranch, ranch um, for his entire life, being just worshipped as some kind of deity without any real identity. All he has been like held up on this pedestal, but he hasn't, he hasn't had a childhood properly. I mean, and you don't need to show that. They just, they, they say that and you can, you can figure out from the way they treat him, the, the fact that he has to wear goggles and earmuffs constantly, that he's, he's a child who hasn't had a normal childhood and that's been stripped from him. Mm, I, I didn't pick up on that. I, How, it's, it's so obvious. No, I, I, I genuinely, I think it just, leaving stuff to the imagination is fine. It's when, I, the but, fact that I've seen Do you want them to have a dialogue scene where they go, oh, this is a lonely child. Look how lonely he is. <laughs> Don't patronize me. I, th I think. But, no, but what what would have would have what uh, would have helped uh, it? So, for example, the religious it. stuff falls off halfway through the film, right? And it's just oh, yeah, that that was a thing. Fine. The whole idea of him picking up government's frigates. And it's it's okay to have these unexplained mysteries. I haven't got a problem with that. It's the fact that there needs to be some payoff. Maybe this is just me being picky, but I want some sort of explanation of her to something. You all have no clue what you're dealing with, do you? I didn't hate the movie completely. There are some really nice bits. I yeah. enjoyed the lighting quite a lot as well. Yeah, I did like, um, I, th I think big Hollywood movies, although you could tell this was a lower budget movie. Mm. I did like, and, and a lot of like, Main, basically mainstream movies that you see in the cinema, it's always, um, everything is very, very lit. You know, you got the standard key light, backlight, fill light, blah, blah. You got, you got multiple sources of light hence, from hence really- Hence gone tutorial on <laughs> no, 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 basically you got, there's like a, a set standard of, of three point lighting where for any one subject, um, ideally you have three sources of light and you really overcomplicate it to get all the lights in different sources. But what I liked about the film is that it all felt really, really natural. It didn't feel like you were in a in a studio with um, big mm. budget lighting, and and sometimes it can go like work terribly. I mean, if you have cheap lighting, it can just look completely amateur. But they managed to blend that really well, where you didn't um, you didn't notice it, um, which is kind of weird. Where I appreciated how unnoticeable the lighting was. Only you would pick up on that. Like the color color is really nice. So yeah, all the ethereal yeah. stuff is white and orange, and all the earth stuff is green and blue. Yeah. It's good. It doesn't it's get in the fun. way of the film at all. It's it's really nice. Yeah. And like the, the sunrise scene's really cool. I, um, I did also like the the nighttime scenes were actually dark. Mm. They didn't just like sh like hue everything blue. It was all it was um, really quite difficult to see, which is actually puts you in the place of clear? the characters. I don't know how I, I, the nighttime scenes are really like you could see what 
you were meant to see on the screen. It wasn't that play of Call of Duty level yeah. with the screen brightness turned down. Yeah. There was clearly intent into what was and wasn't meant to be visible. And that, it, the night was really yeah, good. Yeah. I agree. I, with I, you. I, I like that quite And a lot. I really enjoyed the first half hour, like the first hour or so of the film. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the score was pretty fantastic, I thought. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite ABBA remixes, but it was good. <laughs> um, you know, that's not released on the internet. I've been trying to find the high rise ABBA remix, and I can't remember what the band's called, but they haven't mm -hmm. released it. Can't find it anywhere, which is a shame. A crime. A crime shame. against society. Um, <laughs> I want my ABBA, damn it. You don't have to worry about me. I'm always worried about you. Um, I like worrying about you. That's the deal. It's okay. I know why I'm here. Um, and finally, no, just... no, we're done. I'm sick to death. But wait, talking wait, about this, I like the movie, and wait, you can think um, whatever you want to think. But that's what opinions are for. So whatever, I'm done. What? Oh, it's a reference. Cut. Yeah. yeah.